Hello and welcome. In this video, I'll be building a Pentium 2 Windows 95 PC. The goal with this build is to make a robust machine using parts from the late 90s to create a PC that can run specialty software and games from my childhood. This setup should allow me to test various hardware and software from the time, as well as give me a good system for documenting obscure mid to late 90s oddities. First, I'll need a case to put everything into. I've chosen this Apivia X Master case from the late 2000s. I picked this specific case because of its horizontal form factor, as well as having drive bays for a CD drive, 3.5 inch floppy, and an extra bay that I can use for a 5 and quarter inch floppy drive. Plus, it came with a 500 watt power supply. For the motherboard, I've chosen this Intel AL440LX from 1997. It accepts a slot 1 processor and has a nice selection of card slots including AGP, PCI, and ISA. In addition to the PS2, USB, and other common ports, this board also has a built-in game port, as well as onboard sound driven by a pair of Yamaha OPL3 YMF715S and YMF721S chips. Here is the slot for the processor, and the RAM slots are located right above that. Moving on to the CPU, I'll be using this 300 MHz Pentium 2 with MMX technology processor, which uses a fanless heatsink on the back for cooling. For RAM, I'll be using three PC66 modules that have 32 megabytes of memory each, giving me a total of 96 megabytes. For storage, I'll be using one of these IDE disk on module drives, also known as a DOM drive, which has four gigabytes of space. As for the graphics card, I picked up this AGP 16MB ASUS V3800 Combat Edition NVIDIA TNT2 VGA card. I wanted something a little newer that could do both 2D and 3D graphics in one, as well as being something that was widely used to upgrade computers at the time, so this card, which was released in 1999, seemed like the right choice for this build. For drives, I'm going to be using this 3.5 inch floppy drive from 2006, a light on DVD ROM from 2006, and this TIAC FD55GV 5.25 inch floppy drive. I wasn't able to find a lot of information on this one, but because it fits the color theme I'm going for, I'm going to see if I can make it work. Now that we've gone over all the parts, let's get started putting everything together. I'm going to start by installing the CPU. This just slides down the rails, presses down, and locks in place. On the other side, there's a retaining bracket that clips into place and keeps it from moving. Next is the RAM. I'm going to install all three sticks for the full 96 megabytes. If this ends up causing problems by being too much, I can always just take out a stick or two. Now that the main components are installed on the motherboard, it's time to get into the case and see what I'm working with. It came with a standard power cord, four rubber feet and a PC speaker, sliding drive brackets, a manual, Molex connected fans that are already installed, and a 500 watt power supply with the optional Pentium 4 power pins. I won't be using the extra 4 pins and can just move those off to the side. I'm going to stick the 4 rubber feet on really quick just to prevent the case from sliding around and getting all scratched up. Next, I'm going to add an extra intake fan to help cool the processor since it doesn't have a fan. I got this 120mm slim fan that I can keep out of the way from other stuff. I now need to get these standoffs installed so I can mount the motherboard to the case.
This backplate is a bit different than ones you'd normally see on standard ATX form factors. It doesn't quite fit the opening of the case, so I'm going to attach it directly to the motherboard using the built-in clips to keep it in place instead. Because of where they're located, I'm going to connect the front panel cables first before installing the motherboard. That way, I can read the header labels easier. With the cables connected, I can now drop the motherboard into the case while being careful not to dislodge the backplate. Then secure it in place with some screws. To install the drives, I need to take off the case's front panel and remove the secondary bay cover. As for this floppy drive, the screws attach from the bottom in this case, so I'll have to take care of that a bit later. With mounting brackets attached to the other drives, they just slide in and lock into place. Fast forwarding a bit, I've gone ahead and connected the floppy drives. However, for the hard drive, it attaches directly to the motherboard. But with the other cables in the way, I'm going to have to move things around a bit to get it installed. Last but not least is the graphics card. With the build pretty much complete, let's close it up and turn it on to see how it all looks. Looking at the BIOS, it seems like it found everything, but I have an issue. It detected the floppy drives, but I have to disable the five and a quarter inch floppy drive to make the three and a half inch one work. I'll need to figure out what's causing that with a little more research. It's time to install Windows 95. I picked this OSR 2.5 version that has FAT32 support, but more importantly, also has USB support, which is great since I plan on using a thumb drive for file transfers. With Windows 95 installed, I now need to do some driver setup. I burned the CD with most of what I needed and copied it to the hard drive. There was a lot of searching while picking drivers from disks as well as pointing directories to different files and folders which took some time. After about 30 minutes, I got everything up and running. The graphics driver, sound, and USB are all working. Time to load into Hover and test things out.
So, I made a mistake with this drive. This 55GV version is not compatible with all machines and was causing my 3.5 inch drive to not work. So I'm going to swap it out with one of my GFR models instead since I know these are compatible with most machines of the time. I'm also going to swap the front bezels on these to keep with the color theme. Because the LEDs are different colors, I also had to switch the diffusers on the bezels as well. If I didn't do this, I wouldn't be able to see the LEDs light up during operation. The DVD drive I was using was having trouble opening and closing with this case. So since I was already switching out drives, I decided to swap the light on DVD drive with this LG one instead. The 3.5 inch floppy drive still works. The 5 and a quarter inch drive also now works. And now the DVD drive also opens and closes perfectly, and reads well too. Of course, what build would be complete without some appropriate case badges? I've decided to place them on opposite sides of the floppy drive. I'll leave a link in the description to the eBay page where I got these from. While installing some games, I discovered that games created in Turbo Pascal did not want to run because the processor I used is faster than 200 MHz. To fix this, I used TP Patch by creating a shortcut to the patcher and then appending the necessary files path to the end of the command line section. In this case, for Jazz Jacker of it, it was file 0001.exe that needed to be patched. Once patched, the game runs just fine. If you've made it this far into the video, I thank you very much for watching. I'm quite happy with how this turned out and I can't wait to try all sorts of things with it. If you'd like to stick around, please enjoy some clips of games running on this machine, as well as a short teaser at the end for my next video. Have a nice day! Large enemy approaching. Level completed. Oh! <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> 